Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here. In this episode, I want to review Battle System's new No Paint Required Modular Fantasy Citadel Terrain. All right, this morning I've got the Battle Systems Tabletop Games and Terrain Fantasy Citadel to build. 497 pieces. I am not going to make you guys watch as I build or punch out 497 pieces, but I will try and share with you the highlights. So let's take a look. Now, first thing I want, to, want you to know is I bought this for one specific reason. Um, it is designed for fantasy role-playing games and war games, but um, everything is modular. You can mix and match it, and it's designed to do like a 3x3 three three or a 2x2 two two square foot. Um, everything is flat packed, and as you can see, it comes in these cards. Well, they're not cardstock. It's much harder than that. You punch them out, and um, then you assemble them. So I've got a, looks like, wow, one, two, I, I can't even count. Uh, maybe 20, 20 of these. You can see that they're printed. Uh, they say they're printed on both sides, which is cool. This is probably the clips. There are clips involved that hold certain things together, but the box also says that there are some items that will be glued together, so I'm not sure quite what that is, but yeah, here we go. Clips, empty bag. Please see battlesystems.co.uk for more details and full instructions. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm probably going to pause the video. Let me see what I can do for the instructions, and I'll be right back. All right, this is a citadel, and there are going to be four towers, I guess, at the four corners. So what I've got here is there are three sheets per tower. There are two labeled citadel uh, tower one of two. Um, it's kind of confusing, the, the numbering. I don't know why they did it this way, but you, you need two of these and one of these, which is not really uh, labeled. Well, yeah, it is. It's labeled small. Citadel Tower, two of two. So that's really weird. That's very confusing. Um, it should be one of three, two of three, three of three, but oh well. By the way, um, there were no printed instructions, so I'm going on a video here. So the video basically says to punch out the walls first. The pattern of three of these makes one tower. Each tower is three levels. So this is a level right here. It uses these small little uh, pins. I'm not sure what they call them, connectors. And for example, they just slot in. You just push them in like that on one side. And then you find your matching uh, wall and you can bend, bend it and open the doors. Um, and it sort of just slots in like that. And you push it really nice and tight, and it makes it square up. And then I need another one for this wall. So there's two made right there, like that. This is very wobbly, but the videos state that once you put the floor in, it becomes very secure. And I understand papercraft enough to know, yeah, once you get a floor and a roof on, or a, you know, on a top, it will make this very, very solid. So let's get this in. And you'll notice how the doors line up. That's pretty cool. So you don't have any mismatched. Um, you can obviously tell if you've done it wrong because the door would be half instead of the other. And then this side, the wall just meets. All right, after watching some of the videos, there are different types of clips. This is an L clip, obviously, L-shaped. Uh, there are T T's like this. If you can see that right there. Uh, there are straights right there. And then there's a weird one, which I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't encountered that one. There's this one right here. But uh, so what's going to happen is these three are going to stack. I use T clips to connect the floor, which has a trap door, to this first uh, ground level. So I'm going to take another one of these, and basically it's just, I'm just pushing it down onto those, uh, onto those, there we go. 
And I got to tell you, that is, <laughs> that's pretty sturdy. I mean, yeah, if something heavy comes down on it, it's going to crush. This is cardboard. But um, still, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. And yeah, it comes off pretty easy. It's, it's sturdy enough that it stays on. You have to actually tug it. But it looks like, hey, I'm going to put this door on the very back. I don't know why. It just seems like since I got three doors on these sides, this one will have a door on the very back. Maybe a staircase will go up to this. I'm not sure. All right. Now, for the third floor, you use these L clips. And apparently, the L clips go, um, they are used to connect the floor to here. And then also, it just sits down on here. So let's see. Now I'm also down on the floor level. I'm, I've got my knees on the floor, so I'm, I probably should be standing up to look down in this. But I, I, that's that's it. I did it. All right. And then apparently this just sort of fits down on top of this, and the L bra the, the little L thing goes down in, just sort of sits down in there. Oh, there we go. It just sort of rests. Now it is still sturdy, but this is designed just to lift off. And obviously, I guess that's just so you can so you can expose the inner area or the second floor. Um, it does not. I guess if you wanted to permanently attach it, you would use another one of the T clips here. But in the video, I'm just following what the videos say. They use the L clips for this third level. Now, my guess is, is that for the roof or the the tower piece, uh, there'll be something else used. So let me go check that video out, and I'll be right back to show you what I've learned. All right. So the next thing to do is the very top part, and I've gone ahead and punched out the pieces. And, and I apologize, I should have chosen my uh, background better. Um, these are the two pieces that will wrap around. Here's the floor. No, sorry, that's the floor. And you get eight of these, eight of these little pieces that slot in here. The instructions were um, very specific. There's there's a slot where there's two pieces of wood, and then there's a slot with the stone pointing up. And it's the wood that slots in here. And the instructions say to don't push it in all the way. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do what the instructions say. Then you take one of these and you bend it. Make sure you bend on the lines. You don't wanna accidentally bend something you don't need, and don't wanna bend. And then these line up with half of the wall. Let's see. The instruction said that once you've got everything slotted, then you can tighten it up by pushing pushing the um, the little connectors a little more, you know, a little tighter, which is what I'm doing here. Yeah, okay, I see. This one goes here. Now, I've got three more of these to build in just a minute. I'm not going to make you watch me build all three. So you build one, and you know how to build the remaining three. And then this, what's interesting is there's little grooves underneath here, and that just sort of, it goes down in these little V-cuts here. Look at that. This one's not all the way in. There we go. I was wondering why it wouldn't sit. Look at that. Now, I have to tell you, while I've been recording this, it slowed me down. But honestly, I probably could have built just one of these towers in about a minute or two. It's Once you've done one, the rest of them are pretty easy. All right, I got three more to build, and I'll be back. By the way, on the uh, Citadel Tower 1 of 2, there were two of these uh, in the third special sheet. There is a set of steps that you can build. I forgot to do these. So just punch out the pieces. There's a left and a right, and they look identical. Uh, but because they're printed on both sides, it doesn't really matter uh, which one you choose. And then there are one, two, three, four, uh, five pieces that will slot in here. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there are five. Now I have a nice little staircase for accessing like the second floor. There we go. Remember I had that door back here? There you go. All right, one staircase done. Okay, I've got four towers completed, four staircases. 
Uh, the reason I went and did the staircases was these pieces were included as punch outs for the watchtower. So rather than risk losing them, I went ahead and built them out. Let me talk about a couple things real quick before we move on to the next part of the project. Let's talk about precision. Anyone who has ever made paper craft, specifically this kind where you slot pieces in, um, will we'll identify with this. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way and tell you I am very impressed with two things so far. One, every part that I have punched out has been perfect. Sometimes when you punch parts out of a, you know, a thick piece of chipboard like this, sometimes uh, you, you know, it doesn't pop out completely because a cut wasn't made perfectly, or sometimes the little tabs that, that you know, are very thin pieces, sometimes they tear out and you have to sort of you know, get them with your finger and try and get them out. Or sometimes, uh, if they're not completely cut properly, the paper can actually tear. And so you'll get a, a, some of the graphics will tear off. I can tell you, at least to this point, with four towers and four staircases, no, uh, no problem with the punch outs. Every piece, these are waste pieces, every piece just either falls out on its own or when you punch it, uh, it comes out. And especially, like I said, the little thin holes. Uh, let me show you. I, mean, I, I hate to punch this out because I don't know when I'm going to need it next, but look at that. All the little thin pieces right there, I don't know if you can see them, they all, they all came out. There was none left over. That, that's pretty impressive. Second thing, the, the uh, tolerances on the cuts are also pretty impressive. And by that, what I mean is sometimes when you slot things in like these steps, you know, they slot in, but if you turn it and you shake it, it'll come out because the, the, the tolerance is not good. There's too much of a space there. These tolerances are very tight, meaning that the thickness of the material that you're slotting in, in this case, this step, is pretty, I mean, it's almost exactly the same thickness as the slot. So what happens is when you stick it in, it's the friction that's holding it in. Um, it's very tight fit, and again, nothing nothing comes out. The instructions do say that you can use glue, and, you, and in some cases you may be told to use glue. But so far, everything I've done here has been no glue. And i got to tell you, these little staircases are really sturdy, and you want that because the gaps here are where you would, in, I don't have one with me, but the gaps are where you would insert a miniature that was maybe climbing the stairs and didn't get all the way up. Um, very, very well done uh, in terms of just the, the tolerances there. So very impressed. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the staircases and the towers and I'm going to move them off and we're going to tackle the next part of this project. Okay, up next is going to be the walls. Now there are four towers and there are four walls. They're all built the same. Each wall uses these two sheets, uh, one of three, two of three and then this little half sheet says three of three. The, the way this is done, the walls are built. You take these three and they are arranged on top like that. And then these three go below it. And you use these T, um, T pieces in the middle. Uh, they go to hold the, the walls like that. And like this, and the the T is pointing like inward. So this is the outward facing part of the wall. It doesn't really matter which one you use because they're the same on both sides. But you got to identify at least which is going to be your outside and your inside. So we've got these three done. Next, I need to connect them together. And the next thing you need are these two pieces, which are called buttress. Yeah. So there's two of those. And you put these on the outside of the wall. And what happens is the wall can stand on one direction, but it'll fall over that way. So we need to do stuff on the back.
Okay, you can see I've put the walkways on now. They keep it from tipping over either way with the buttresses. So you take one of these pieces and you very gently bend this back. Don't bend it back too far. You want it at a subtle angle. And you put one of these um, L clips in here so that it goes like that. All right. And then this piece goes in that middle bracket that we didn't use. Now, the way this is designed is it's supposed to go up against one of the towers. So like if you had a second story door here, it would go right up against third story. It goes up here on the walkway so that you could have these doors open, right? And a miniature could enter there. Pretty, pretty slick. All right, the last thing you have to do for the wall, they got the canopy, and it's just where you could have coverage from the sun. There's our canopy. All right, so it just slots back here in two slots, and it creates a little shaded area for, uh, I guess, a commander or somebody that wanted to be out of the sun. They could look out here. So there is a wall. I've got to make two more. I made one as a test, one to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and make two more, and then we'll go on to the next part of the project. Here it is so far. Now, later I'm going to move, I'm going to get rid of this mat so you can see it a little better because it kind of blends. As an RPG player and a wargamer, this is very cool. Uh, all Total time to build all this, probably less than an hour and a half, and that's counting watching a few video tutorials and then, of course, recording and talking to you guys. But um, I, what's really interesting, you build one, because everything's done in fours. You build one, and then the remaining three go very quick. First wall I built took a little longer. The remaining three, I just popped them out real fast. So let me go ahead and move this off and finish up this kit and show you what else is in it. And then we'll see the full thing on a different color mat. The uh, gallows and stock is the single sheet. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and punch everything out, get it all laid out, and then we'll go over how it is assembled. The few last little bits that come on the gallows and stocks um, sheet is the actual stock, uh, well, stock, I guess. This one uh, slots in here. This will have to be glued. It does not stick well. They even tell you in the video to glue it because um, it, it, it doesn't really lock in place, but it's just a little stock where you put your head and stay prisoner for a day. Um, not something I would probably, I mean, I'll glue it together, but I can't imagine. It's a nice little bit of scatter terrain maybe. Um, but it's just a little too fiddly for me. I probably wouldn't probably wouldn't have it unless I was doing some sort of scene where the, the players had to rec you know uh, rescue someone who was going to be hanged or you know and maybe there was somebody here who was also needing to be freed. The next thing is the chopping block for the executioner. It just slots in place. Um, it's a little oversized. I don't think it's to scale. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, it's a nice little addition, extra pieces. And then the final piece, which is something I'm not going to make, it's the uh, bucket where the head would fall into. And you have to glue it. It's a little circle piece and then a piece that's uh, got um, scoring so you could, you could make it into a bucket. The only problem I see with it is it's huge. I mean, and it's fiddly. Uh, I, I just don't like to make things that are supposed to force into a circle. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice that they include it. But honestly, I could probably just make one out of some little piece of plastic I find, like a, like a cap uh, or something like that. But anyway, that's the last little bit for the gallows. Let's keep moving and see what's next. Okay, the next sheet is called the gatehouse. When this is assembled, it can be used to replace this center section of one of your walls. So I'm going to follow the instructions and show you how to build this. But um, I do want a larger entrance to this, not having four solid walls. So I'm going to make the modification and remove this centerpiece based on the instructions and replace it with this.
The last little bit is just some details. There's a gargoyle that has a, um, a flame bowl. So you put it in, uh, flame bowl, and then this banner, which goes down here, slots in there. And then this thing hangs from the left and right of the door. You just stick it through the slot, push it down, and it looks <laughs> pretty cool. Nice, very three-dimensional. The last few things that I want to share with you are the marketplace. This is actually a pretty cool little structure. Um, it's all removable so you can get in down in there, but it's got a wood, wood roof on one side and a tarp or a cloth on the other. And then there's this little display stand, which is slightly angled that you can put inside it with little bits and bobs or what have you. It's really pretty nice. Um, I don't show you how I make it because it was pretty straightforward and simple. I will put links in the description below for all the videos that I've used and the other videos of the other products that they sell that I don't have. So you can follow along. If I, if, if I skipped a step or if I didn't go into detail enough, you can go watch the actual videos that, um, that the, the Battle Systems provides. And then finally, they also give you these two little stalls, which I like these two. They're kind of kind of nice. They have the green and the red cloth top, and each one comes with a little bench for additional stuff. So if you were going to have a game, uh, an RPG, where you had like a marketplace, these are these are actually very, very cool. And remember, you've got the uh, the gallows here, which, you know, all of this can go inside the Citadel, inside the courtyard area, or outside, I guess, whatever works for you. But um, I really wanted you guys to see the uh, Citadel itself and its assembly. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you everything together, and uh, we'll see what it looks like uh, on a game map. All right, here it is. Um, I've got the front gate here, uh, so you can see that it's, uh, it's maybe see the scale. I've got some miniatures here, one on the wall, one in the tower. It's, it's perfect scale for a war game. This would be so much fun. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but when I play war games, I'm usually standing. So looking down in here is not a problem. You know, accessing the various uh, towers and walkways and stuff. Now, one issue for a war game could be the internal walkway inside one here. It's a little, it's a little tricky. You'd have to be careful to not, not to knock anything. Now, the other thing you have to be careful about when you're dealing with uh, paper, paper craft or cardboard is, you know, knocking something. If you, if you bump a tower, it's, it's, you know, it's not gonna break, but it will come apart. The, the obvious solution is to glue as much of it together as you can like glue all of a tower together. Now, if you glue it, what that does, it prevents you from accessing the inside. So for an RPG, you might not want to do that. But for most, for a lot of war games, at least the ones I know of, typically you don't do indoor things. Uh, now, if you want to go in and come up here, you either climb or you and your um, opponent agree that once you enter, say it's, eight inches to the top or, or two rounds or whatever, um, you have to come to sort some sort of agreement. I will probably use this for both RPG and war games. So I probably won't glue the towers together, but I probably am going to glue the walls. I'm going to go back where I can and just use wood glue between seams just to strengthen things up a bit. Um, I, think that will, I think that will help. Now this is supposed to be modular, so you're supposed to be able to use it with other uh, battle systems uh, kits, and they have a whole bunch of fantasy ones, believe me. When I went to the store the other day, I could not believe there's a wizard's tower, a chapel, there's a graveyard. I mean, there were probably eight or nine that I saw, and that probably isn't all of them. Um, but this one's the one that caught my eye because for some time now, I have really wanted a larger type um, fort, or in this case, citadel, that I could use in my war games, but also in an RPG if the players ever find themselves out in the wilderness or wherever, in this case, the, the snow. I picked the blue so it would be a little easier to see. Um, you know, this would, be, this would be kind of fun. Now, I traditionally don't run RPGs with a lot of terrain that blocks the player's views. Not every player, uh, you know, enjoys, you know, having to stand up and look down, especially during combat. So I tend to think I'll probably use this more heavily for war games, 
but uh, for an RPG, maybe a one shot or something, especially if you're just using a tower. Like for instance, you know, you could just use one tower and one wall to simulate a battle. You, know, you don't have to have the whole thing. All right, so let me get to my work table and I'll go over uh, a summary of my thoughts on this and let you know what I think. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing. Okay, there you go. That is the Fantasy Citadel box. All right. Uh, it was $110 at the store I bought it from. I'm sure your price may vary depending on where you're located. But um, let me tell you something, $110. If I wanted to recreate what you just saw me build, that full citadel with the ta four towers, four walls, all that good stuff, I could spend less than $100 in material, but it would take a long time, long time, more than $100 worth of my time. Um, now granted, if I needed it quick, definitely. But if I needed it six months from now, maybe I would try and make something on my own. But I have to say, I think it is a very fair price for what you're getting. Now, for the pros, um, very, very easy to put together. I mean, not a problem at all. Uh, I think I think kids could do it. The um, the instructions are all uh, done on, on videos that you can see on the Battle Systems website. I would have liked to have had some printed instructions, but honestly, I think after a few builds, a few structures, I started to get it. I started to see how things sort of work together. So maybe not. I think the videos will suffice. The other thing I really liked about it, and I mentioned, was the precision. These pieces, they, they slide together and they stay together. They're not, they're not slippery. They don't fall apart when you shake them or pick them up. And most of the structures are typically built with three or more interlocking pieces. And, and that's critical because what it means is, is you get a stronger structure. They have also created um, more structures. I, I remember seeing a chapel, a wizard's tower, a graveyard. Uh, there were, man, there were probably eight or nine uh, different boxes. After having built this thing, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should go look at some of their other, uh, their other box sets and see what they're about. Because um, as someone who plays both RPGs and war games, this is going to get a lot of use for me. This table or this citadel, uh, I can take all those towers and walls and probably come up with a box. I can go to the dollar store and find a container that they'll all fit in with a lid and I can seal it and they're protected. And then I can take it with me to the game store or wherever I want to be here. Very lightweight, very easy to carry. Now the flip side of that is the con, which is it's cardboard, it's paper. So it's not as sturdy as wood and foam, although foam you could argue is not that sturdy either. But you know, it is something that could be, if somebody fell on your, uh, your citadel, it's gonna get flattened. There's a lot of stuff that's on the sheets that's called scatter terrain, and I love scatter terrain. It's like little bits of wood and odds and ends, and that's great. I use that. The there were some items on there that were way out of scale. Like there's a there's some swords and there's a cleaver and uh, an axe, and these these things. I mean, they're big. They're as big as a miniature, so they're not to scale. Um, they're, I think they're meant as adornment, like you would glue them on the walls or what have you, and that's fine. Um, if they are truly meant to be like scatter terrain, like, like somebody could find a sword and pick it up, they're a little bit too big of scale for me, and I do like everything to sort of be to scale. That's just me as a GM and me as a war gamer. I like, I like to be able to take pictures, and I like everything to have, have sort of that same scale. So those little bits... It's not a complaint. They're just not useful to me. But somebody's going to find them useful, and you're going to punch them out, and you're going to have fun with them, so go for it. What made me think of this, though, is the barrels. There were a couple things in there, like crates and barrels, that uh, you would have to glue together, and they're just too fiddly. They're just too trying to bend the cardboard and glue it and, and, and make it stick and all that. It's too much trouble. I'll 3D print me some barrels uh, if I need them. But again, it's a nice thought that they threw those things as extras to fill in the blank space on the sheets. All right, if you have any more questions about the Fantasy Citadel kit, just post them in the comments below and I will do my best. As a summary, I will tell you, I like this. The precision of the cut pieces, everything came apart easy. 
everything assembled, slotted easy. Once everything was slotted, it was very sturdy. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, I saw this and I, I knew this was coming out. I didn't realize it was going to come out, you know, this week, but I knew it was coming out. So I knew to keep my eyes open for it. And when I saw it, I think my store had like eight of them and I, there were only two left when I got there. So obviously other people are seeing this as, uh, as something they want for their games. I got to tell you in, in the year 2020 right now, it is a good time to be an RPG player or a war gamer. The stuff that we have available for our game in terms, I mean, if you don't have a 3D printer, here you go. I mean, you don't, if you want a Citadel, you could 3D print all the walls and towers and everything else you want, but not everybody has a 3D printer, not everybody wants one, and not everybody feels comfortable with that kind of technology. But this is so easy to make. So I'm really, I'm really just floored at all the different stuff that is coming out for us gamers these days. Um, paper terrain, 3D printed terrain, laser cut terrain, you name it, it is a good time to be a gamer. So let me conclude by saying Battle Systems, this is not a paid review. I went and paid for this, my own money, um, and I, I, this is an honest review. Would I buy it again? Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't need two of these, although... No. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, two of these might be cool. Um, I do want to investigate some of their other kits. So I probably next weekend will probably visit the game store and see what else they have. Uh, Battle Systems does have fantasy. I know they have science fiction because I have one of their other systems, which is a cyberpunk uh, layout for science fiction wargaming. But um, definitely you're going to want to check it out. I'll put all the information and links below in the description so you can go check it out. All right, my friends, that is all I have for you this week. Please, please, please go check out the Tabletop Crafters Guild Facebook page and join us over there. Please join me over at my own Facebook page, the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page, where I share a lot of videos and photos and things that don't make it into videos or over to the Tabletop Crafters Guild. Uh, also, I would highly encourage you to come check me out at the Buy Me a Coffee website. I'll put this information below. I have moved off of Patreon. Right now, you can come over and for $3 a month or $30 a year, which is $2.50 a month if you want to pay a year in advance, you can sign up as a member and you can get Bexham's Bazaar Gaming Magazine every month. You can get uh, a copy of the RPG and War Game Supply Sourcebook every month. And you're going to get access to all of my videos 30 days in advance of them going public on YouTube. If that's um, if that sounds interesting to you, again, I'll put the link below and you can come and uh, check it out. But again, it's $3 a month and you get two magazines a month plus access to crafting videos 30 days before anyone else. So check out the details below for that information. All right, that's it. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. I'll be back next Wednesday with another video. Everybody, take care.